want to start right here uh, and we want to start with uh, Mr. Emmanuel Dakwa because you secured a, a decision back in July this year. This is huge. Not many people go to court uh, and even out of the number that will go to court, not many people will get a judgment in their favor. Explain the facts of your matter to us. Mm, uh, just before Mr. Dakwa get, talks us through his, um, uh, that very important case, uh, Dr. Justice Youngson, I think one thing I would like us to do to sort of set the uh, the rules of engagement, if you will. The term negligence is thrown around a lot. You know, when someone has a negative experience in uh, a medical facility or at the hands of a medical professional, the word comes out quickly, negligence. Um, but it's not so simple, is it? Yeah, Kojo, exactly so. Um, many a time you, you, you get, like you said, the word bandied around, negligence, negligence. But in the true sense, when we are talking about medical negligence, we are talking about medical malpractice. And this is something that technically is within the remits of the law courts. And the, the law courts have set the parameters for you to either succeed or fail based on what you present. So generally, if you look at our jurisdiction, the classical definition of negligence was given by a famous guy called Ebuse at the time. In the case of uh, Alassane Kutukuli and Muru Hauser. And this is what he said. In the straight legal analysis, negligence means more than a heedless or a careless conduct, whether in omission or commission. It properly connotes the complex concept of duty, breach, and the resultant damage or injury suffered by the person to whom the duty was owed. So technically speaking, negligence is not coterminous with careless or heedless acts. And if you are to succeed, then one, there has to be a duty of care. Mm. Thankfully, the law courts have settled this, so there's no need for litigation. All medical professionals or health professionals owe patients a duty of care. Mm. So the court will not waste time to go into that. It is a given. Mm -hmm. The next is whether that duty has been breached. And in terms of breach here, we will look at things like causation. What really happened? It will be measured against a certain set standard right. within the profession. Somebody may say the reasonable man's test, but that becomes the reasonable doctor's test. Mm. So the standard as set within the profession is what that conduct will be measured against to see whether there's been a breach or otherwise. And if there's been a breach, the next level is that, was there a resultant injury or damage? There could have been a breach, but if there's no damage, you won't succeed. Mm. You need to succeed on all three. Right. So the next or the final step is the damage or the injury. Mm. And even that damage has to be direct or proximate to the breach. Okay. If there are intervening factors, you might not succeed because whatever may have happened is as a result of the intervening factors mm. post the breach. So for example, maybe a medical practitioner performed a surgery or did something on you. Everything went well. You go home after some time, maybe you go engage yourself in something mm. and then that's a problem. Right. And then you come back thinking that, oh, it was because the surgery was not performed properly. Mm. If evidence is taken properly and it is proven that there were intervening factors that led to the injury, other than a direct cause from what, in quote, the medical practitioner is alleged to have done, mm. then you will not succeed. So... Generally speaking, when we hear of malpractice, malpractice, mm. we need to put it in a proper context. Okay. That's... Medical errors exist. Mm. And it's not every error that will also amount to a success in terms of your attempt to go in for a malpractice claim. Right. But I'm sure as we go forward, we'll look at all these. There are so many causes 
of medical malpractice mm. and we'll go through some of them as we move along right thank you that's a very important foundation you've set there for us okay so three things we need to look at for first of all uh, in order for you to be successful in improving medical negligence first of all uh, there must be a duty of care that's a given uh, that duty of care must be breached it must have been seen to be breached or must be proved to be having breached then finally as a result of that breach you must suffer damage or injury those three things must exist in order for you to succeed in uh, uh, having that awarded you know in your favor As